I was asked a question today uh, about uh, using standby in solid state rectifier apps, when to use it, when not. Most people who follow my channel know that you almost never need to use standby if you have a tube rectifier. I'll do a separate video on just that and I'll uh, do a few different videos as amps come in on various solid state rectification, rectified amps. This is a 67 baseman and uh, this one is designed and I chose the capacitors that I used to have a lot of headroom so that these capacitors can handle the highest possible level of DC that this amp provides before the tubes start drawing current, which is the worst case. Uh, other amps are not going to have capacitors that can handle the max unloaded DC. Um, I will point them out in later videos. This is not, you saw this in Lyle's one video and applies to all amps. I'm showing you how to make the determination. Let's take cathode stripping out of the mix. There's no such thing as cathode stripping in the tubes that we use in guitar and bass amps. That's something that only applies to radio transmitters and old television stuff. You're not going to strip the cathodes if you have DC voltage present before the heaters warm up. All that's going to happen is the heaters will not um, be far, fully warm, so the tube's not going to draw as much current. And as you see this video, you'll see the, the, the DC decrease as the, the tubes start to draw current. Um, there's no such thing as cathode stripping or cathode poisoning in an app like this. There is one other consideration with a cathode... Uh, follower stage, and I'll show that in another video with a Marshall or similar cathode follower uh, stage. This one does not have. But for this amp, the only consideration is whether the capacitor voltage rating can handle the maximum DC present in the amp before the tubes draw current. And there are three critical places that this will get you. The first filter node, which in fenders, if you're using the standby switch, as soon as the wall voltage is on, this has voltage. The second, uh, or screen node, which is the first thing uh, the circuit sees when this, after the standby switch, and at the moment that it is switched from standby to on and those tubes are warm, this reads as a dead short and it's trying to draw current. That can be hard on the switch. You have to make sure that this capacitor is rated for that max voltage. And while later, these will have much lower DC levels on these preamp nodes because as the tubes draw current, uh, that current draws through these resistors, the voltage drops. At the initial power on, there's no current, um, so the DC will be artificially high. Some amps will might have 350 volt caps here where I have 500. That can be a problem. I'll point that out in other amps. But in this basement, we've got two 350 volt caps in series with voltage bias resistors in parallel with each, which force each one of these capacitors to handle exactly half of the maximum voltage. Um, and the two in series means that these can handle 700 volts total, 350 volts per capacitor. Subsequent capacitors can handle 500 volts. Now I'm gonna power this on in standby and measure the worst case voltage here at the filter cap. The, the reservoir cap, the first filter cap. So before the tubes draw any current, it goes to about 480 volts. 480 volts is quite a bit, uh, but it's well under the 700 volts rating here. That tells me that that worst case here, 480, is going to be lower than um, the 500 maximum on these capacitors. It's not as much leeway as I would prefer overall, but it does help quite a bit to have that um, 15 volt overage. Now that's the worst case, powering it up using standby. If I take it yeah, out of standby, then this will not go as high to begin with because these will draw some of the voltage as well. You see how this has gone to 35 volts even though it's not plugged in. That voltage was stored in these caps and it's come down to these. So I'm going to uh, get my um, voltage off these. I've got the amp powered off, but the amp is out of standby. So we've got 26 volts there and it's dropping. I'm going to hasten that drop by doing that. 
Don't do this unless you really know what you're doing. If I had more substantial voltage, I would use a uh, alligator clip to a, a very large resistor. But because I have these bleeder resistors that balance out the uh, DC voltage on these ca capacitors, I can bleed the app down to zero fairly quickly and safely. All right, now these capacitors have essentially no voltage on them. The amp is not in standby. It is in the playing position. I'm going to very quickly, because the tubes will draw current relatively quickly, much quicker than people think. I'm going to start here at the worst case, and then go to here and here. It should be less than that 485 we saw. Four sixty, four seventy nine. Yeah, so it's a little bit less than that four eighty we saw. And as the tubes begin to draw current, they're going to settle to their operating voltages at idle. Both channel volumes at zero, nothing plugged into them. So with the wall voltage right now pretty high at one hundred twenty five here in Memphis, Tennessee, in February, we've got four hundred sixty three volts at the uh, reservoir, 462 at the screen, 452 at the phase inverter, 425 at the first preamp node, and 315 at the second preamp node. So, based on what I just measured, in this 67 basement, <coughs> you do not have to use standby. You can if you want. It won't hurt anything, with one exception. Uh, they used a very nice Carling switch for the standby switch in these amps, but that uh, Carling switch is rated for AC voltage, not DC voltage. And so when you have 462 volts DC, on a switch which was not rated for more than about 30 volts DC, um, you get problems and those switches begin to arc. It's a very common thing to replace standby switches in old fenders. Uh, the switch was just never designed for the purpose Leo put it to. You'll start to hear that as thudding when you use the standby switch, but eventually it will begin to actually arc and you can actually have some burned wires. That said, a new switch is five, seven dollars. You can put 2 watt 47K resistors across them or something if you want to uh, soften that. Some guys use a capacitor to soften that, just to, uh, to take a little bit of stress off the switch. In general, I will tell the owner of this amp that standby is optional. It's not really needed at all. Remember, remember what I said, though. On other solid state rectified amps, standby can be needed because the voltage can exceed the ratings of the capacitors. Um, so I, I hope this answers some questions. I'm sure this will raise questions that I'm not aware of. Please put them in the comments. I, I love uh, talking to people about amps. I've been stuck in the hospital for a week. Couldn't talk to anyone there about amps. It drove me nuts. Actually, no, I'll take that back. I had a really pleasant conversation with the uh, um, guy who did my anesthesia, uh, who had a buddy who built his amps. And we, we had a really nice conversation until he knocked my ass out. But, uh, you know, you meet the interesting people when they're, when they're about to gas you.